You've been a huge advocate of empowering and advancing women. How has gender influenced your career, both in ways that have created unique opportunities, but also in Washington and politics, often a male-dominated field, some unique challenges? Well, I, I remember the first time I ran for office as a state legislator and somebody said to me, well, are you intending to run as a female candidate? And my basic question was, do I have a choice? I'm not sure quite what that even means. But knowing that people often judge women differently, um, whether we like it or not, there are sometimes questions about what's happening to your family and what's going on. Uh, people, I think, are more interested in seeing a balance, uh, knowing that you are a balanced and diverse person, and that may not be as important for some male leaders. And helping young women sort out and figure out what balance works for them. Uh, that a work-life balance always makes sense, whether you're in a family situation or not, whether you have kids or not. But for women, it tends to be, I think, all the more important because not only does it make sense to have um, a balance that allows you to do your best work, but also it's part of the way you're judged in the workplace differently than your male colleagues. That, I think, is important that women look out for other women, take care of other women. Always remember that when you reach a platform, you got to reach back and reach up. I stand on the shoulders of lots of incredible women who came before me, who inspired me, mentored me, uh, led me along the way, taught me to say yes and take a deep breath and go for it. As governor, you're chief executive of a state, but now in your role, you have diverse constituents, complex political environment. What was the toughest part about the transition and what surprised you most? Ironically, probably the toughest part and, and the biggest surprise was I had a boss again. I hadn't had a boss in a long time. I'd been a, an elected political figure, really responsible to my constituents. So for a while, the transition about remembering, yes, there is the president and I'm actually part of his team. Um, so while you're a CEO of a big enterprise like Health and Human Services with, as you say, lots of complex agencies within the enterprise. That enterprise is also part of a larger across government scheme and, and just remembering that, well, yeah, we, we really need to make sure we're on the same page as the White House, coordinate our strategies, make sure our outreach message is really on the same page. As you've been trying to lead people along in your new role and, and take into account all these different diverse constituents, what leadership skills have been tested most for you? I came into the job in the midst of the first pandemic in 70 years. So neither I nor anyone really close around me had ever worked through a pandemic, knew exactly the steps of the process, either in other departments. Uh, my friend Janet Napolitano was the Secretary of Homeland Security and she had a big piece of this. So we were kind of making a process at every point along the way and you just had to kind of take a deep breath, listen to good advice and then go for it. So far that has actually worked pretty well. Uh, when you make a mistake, figure out what the mistake is, talk about it and then correct it quickly and move on. So often I talk to leaders who say that their mistakes, failures, setbacks are often the most formative experiences in driving their success. If you think about a failure or setback through that lens, what's been your most successful one? <laughs> um, I would say probably the the entire effort navigating the legislation on the Affordable Care Act. There were certainly um, issues that we never anticipated would come up and, and probably a long effort of the congressional discussions that led to various controversy and conversations. Knowing that, knowing what can happen when there's a vacuum, I think has made us better about reaching out, about trying to make sure people know what's coming in advance and and also I, I was able to tap into old relationships so I had served at the state level as an insurance commissioner they became incredibly important partner I had served as a governor and certainly the governors around this country have become great allies and friends so while there may have been you know controversy in Congress I think at the state level things are actually going a lot more smoothly, working with former allies and colleagues and knowing kind of what the states need to know about to deliver well on a program.
Yeah. If you were writing a letter to yourself of 20 years ago, what advice would you have given yourself about taking this journey? Well, I think trust your own instincts um, is, is a piece of advice that um, I would give to myself and, and keep giving to myself over and over again. Find and keep a supportive spouse if you um, can. Uh, that's critically important. And by supportive, I mean somebody who really wants you to succeed and be happy. Um, make sure your friends are really your friends who look out for you, take care of you, and that you spend some time with them. And then find a balance that works. I, I am a big believer that there will be something for every individual that centers them, that kind of helps them return to some equilibrium. And it's different for people. At finding that way to uh, put yourself at peace and being able to say, I've done enough for today. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and start all over again. Uh, because if you can't do some of those things, I think it's very easy to make yourself pretty crazy right away.